Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Tim Gentle. In fact, I just live up the road on Barnard Street. I've been around here for about four years and I thoroughly enjoyed being given this topic. Digital Classroom 101. Let's start from the basics and let's work our way up today. Uh, I've got a lot going on up here, so my mind's racing. You know, I'm streaming live. Hello world. Um, I'm using a web browser. I'm using a clicker and I've got uh, a few things to show you how I do what I do. I'm not here to tell you how to teach. Believe me, you are the teachers in the room. What I'm here to do today is to show you a lot of digital tools that you go, ooh, I like that one. Ooh, I like that one. No, not that appropriate. Okay, I want to know more about that. So that's my goal. So you'll be uh, watching a presentation live. I'm recording it and you can watch it again. And I've also shared the slide deck. So if you're interested in getting the slide deck, what you're seeing up here, you can just download it from timgentle.com slash abc. Again, Kerry, we might get you to pump this out to people once I leave, but it's there if you need it. So I'm using a few tools. For example, uh, to put together this presentation, I'm using Keynote. Keynotes like PowerPoint, some of you may already be using that. In fact, later I'll be showing you my iPhone. I'll be actually showing you up on the screen, my iPhone. And for that particular uh, I guess, way, I'm using a program called Reflector, $10. It's great to be able to mirror your iPad, your tablet up on the screen. Now I'm using Nearpod. This is to allow audience participation. That allows you to give me some feedback. So when you're in the classroom or out in the field, potentially you could use Nearpod to get instant feedback from what you're delivering. I'm using SlideShare to take my presentation, put it up on the web and allow people to interact with it and download it. And I'm actually streaming on the net using Google Hangouts on Air. Everything that I'm using is actually free other than Reflector. Actually, Keynote might cost 10 bucks or something like that. So we're not talking a huge outlay in, uh, I guess, software and hardware. So without further ado, let's get into the content. So who am I? I'm considered a digital educator. I've always thoroughly enjoyed lifting the hood and showing people how to change the spark plugs. I'm right into that. And uh, I was an entrepreneur. I don't know if I still am. Uh, I sold a business recently and I've moved on. Uh, but I've started up a new business. And I'll show you a little bit about that. It's pretty exciting. So I've done approximately 500 workshops. Some people in the room have hired me several times. I've travelled to all ends of the globe, almost, you know, country, I would say. I've done a few overseas. Uh, last week, Roma, uh, Emerald, uh, Childers. Week before that, Tasmania. So where my niche is, is probably standing up in front of you today. Now, lately I've been working with Geelong, uh, Girton Grammar. They've actually had me go in and develop flip classrooms for them. In fact, I said, I don't want to develop flip classrooms. I want to show you how to develop flip classrooms. And so I'm working with them to sort of iron out that. And we've put together a really good process for the teachers to do that. But this is my little baby. This is something that I'm very excited about. And uh, Anne, you'll be thoroughly... Uh, I've actually set up an incorporated association, Kerry. So going through that process of setting up a not-for-profit organisation, it's been brilliant. And I was lucky enough, our association, to win a bus. And I'm converting it into a classroom and we're driving around regional, rural and remote Australia. So over the next few months, you'll see, I guess, through my social media, the fit out of the bus. We just picked it up last week. Pretty amazing, it was huge. I've had this coach license for years too. I've had it for 10 years, I've never driven a bus. I got it on a cattle station when I was working out in the bush to drive the uh, cattle trucks. And suddenly now I'm in front of a 50, uh, what was it, 54 seater bus driving it down <coughs> with my dad. So look out for that. The name of the organization is called Digital Coach Incorporated. So who are you? <coughs> well, you're teachers, you're educators, and you're here to develop your skills. You're either digitally enabled, you're already, you know, got several things on the go and you've, you've got computers, you've got iPads, there's a few of you, but some people sometimes have three or four in front of them when I present. Or you're digital newbies, because you're interested 
and using more digital tools. Today, it's designed for both people. What we're going to be covering is the digital classroom, digital tools, and I'm going to do some demos. Now, I'm interested in the room. What is a digital classroom? I'm hoping that some of you have got it up in front of you right now. I can see there, Paul. As I'm pushing the... Oh, I grab this as that's all right. Those that haven't got Nearpod on the go, Paul's got it, thank you, Paul. As I'm clicking the presentation, that is actually following. So it moves in synchronicity. So people can be sitting on their iPads, watching the presentation, and as I move through it, people get to see it. So I believe a digital classroom is using things like what I was showing, Nearpod, digital tools, to enhance the learning environment. Sometimes it's a little bit controversial. Sometimes it can get in the way. Sometimes it could also be really time consuming. Does it work? But you know, we, we kind of look at our students, we, we look at the way the world's going and the digital world is not slowing down. If I can do one thing today, I want to help you keep up a little bit and show you some good little things to take home. You're the teachers. And my goal today is to inspire you. All right, I want to explore things. I want to stimulate. I also want to show you some demos. And I'm hoping that you're going to adopt some things. So let's set the scene. Here he is, Mr. Hamilton. He's a geography teacher. I don't really know maths very well or science, so I know geography okay. He studies, uh, he's got grades 9 and 10. <coughs> he owns a laptop and he owns a smartphone. I'm going to equip Mr. Hamilton with some goodies to help him teach a bit better. Let's see how this goes. So we might get the ball rolling. Those that are on Nearpod, the question I have, you'll have a look on your screen, you can interact with it. Have you travelled through the Red Centre Northern Territory? Those that have got the near plot in front of them, if they could just interact with that, please. And as you can see here, it's giving me instant feedback. Potentially we can see here that Claire, yep, Claire's travelled through it. And as we're sort of clicking away, we get instant gratification. We get an instant understanding of what our students or our workshop attendees are thinking. So this is a feature of Nearpod. I just thought I'd show that as a bit of a demo. So you might want to do graphics. Let's start off there. Anyone heard of Canva? Is anyone using Canva? Paul? Anyone other than Paul and myself? <laughs> Good. <laughs> I was hoping. That's why you're here, Tim. Great. Tell us about Canva. Canva is just like, oh, thank you. Where, where have you been all my life? So let's have a little look at it, and it's better to look and you know touch things rather than just me up there talking. So I'm going to go to Canva, it's free, and I am going to log in. Canva is a great tool, cloud-based, that allows you to create all sorts of things on the fly. So if I want to, I can come in here and I can create a Facebook cover, a presentation, a social media post, and there's a lot more things under the hood. If I wanted to, I could create a blog, marketing material, social media headers, and so forth. But let me go back to go forwards. I'll go back to my one. And I created this little one for today. So I'll quickly show you a few bits and pieces. On the right-hand side is what I call my desktop, my publishing, my, my the, the, the graphics. And down here you can see I've just started something really small. I can come in here and I can do a search on Melbourne. When I do a search on Melbourne, it'll bring up pictures of Melbourne. Some are free, some are a dollar, but at the end of the day you can get pictures at a drop of a hat. When you find something, this one here is free, you just drag and drop it. Now, I can come down and create something new. I'll just delete this. And if I want to, I can come and have a look at the different layouts that it gives me. I can go into the grid. And if I want to, I can just choose, say, this one. And then I can go back. I can go into search, Melbourne again, enter. 
and I can start dragging over and just dropping them into place. Beautiful stuff. Now if I want to, I can also come up and I can, I'll just stay on this page. You can see here I can come in and I can edit this. I can edit this. I can change numbers, I can move things around. I just quickly created that. But I have no skills whatsoever of creating this layout. Absolutely nothing. So what I need to do is I'll add a new page and I'll just choose one. I'll just drag it over and it suddenly gives it to me. I can use this. Now I can also upload my own pictures. I can drag it over and I can place it in place. You're getting the idea. So what this tool is, is it allows me to play around. Once I'm happy with it, say for example I like this, I can download it as a PNG file. I can download the whole lot or just one page. I'll download that one page. I'd have to pay a dollar if I wanted to. So that dollar would have been for the layout that I used there last of all. I won't bother, but once I download that, it's a PNG file, I can whack <coughs> that in my presentation and so forth. So that's Canva. I thought you'd be interested in having a look at that. Now, some people like to teach with cartoons. There's a great one for the iPad called Toontastic. Now, I don't have enough time to demo everything, but if you like to teach with graphics, if you like to be able to, you know, put a person into a particular scene, add a little bit of audio over the top and move your character along, Toontastic's brilliant for that. I did a quick little animation this morning. I'll just quickly bring that up. Here it is here. And you'll see the kind of outcome. I'm happy with it. I don't know if it's nothing special, but you get the idea. This is called Tomb Plastic. And so, as the reporter made their way down the beach, they could film the reefs and the rocks. was Toontastic, something that you can get everything there, it didn't cost me a cent, and I just played around with that. Right. Back to the presentation. <coughs> so you might want to put together presentations, PowerPoints, things like that. Well, the one that I'm showing you today is called Nearpod. It allows you to create interactive presentations that allows you to embed quizzes, in, embed activities. I've got a few more as I progress through. But if you don't have any other skills, something like this, it's called Haku, Haku Desk. This one's really good. It allows you to create well laid out presentations. You can also fix them on your iPad or your tablet, but you can have a laptop, fix them all up in, the, you know, in your class, and then you can present them. So that's a good tool, and I'm demoing right now in Nearpod. We'll move along. Some people love to work with video. Video speaks a, a million words in one respect. I use video all the time. So right now, I'm presenting using Google Hangouts on air. I'm streaming live, so people can be watching from Canada. So I thought I'd quickly show you how I'm doing that. So this laptop here has a webcam. I'm standing in front of the webcam. However, someone can easily look at that from remote. I'll show you, we'll have a little look at it remotely. I invited myself from memory, let me have a little look here. <laughs> uh, Tim Gentle, have I got it here? Uh, how, do I, how do I do it? I'll invite myself here. page. I'll just quickly do that now. Mail that. So I'm going to invite myself. So that computer has invited this computer. Should have uh, take a couple of seconds to come through. 
I'll show you. It's easy to look at. So here, you can see, hello, wave to the world. You're all on Kazza, probably better anyway. <laughs> so this is uh, streaming at the moment, and it's got Google Hangouts on air. And it allows me to film, and it automatically uploads to YouTube once it's done. So it gets a little video file and uploads it to YouTube and suddenly I can reuse it. So I quite like that. I'm going to send this one as well, because this will be better. I have a lot going on here. Just sending the YouTube link. It's crazy, but I've just emailed myself. There's got to be a better way than that. So this is the YouTube link, and it's normally like a 15-second delay. It's crazy, because I've just emailed myself. There's got to be a better way than that. <laughs> So people can be watching this live on YouTube if they needed to. So you can share the YouTube This is the YouTube link. link. Right, but I've got to turn this up. And it's only like a 15 second delay. <laughs> you get the idea? So I'll turn that off because uh, that way then we won't get the... It's kind of weird. I've had four going at the same time. And like it sounds like a bit of a rap after a while and it gets in a loop. I was having a few beers at the same time. I must have been bored. Okay, where am I? I'm here. So the other thing I really like to do is capture the screen. This is really good, watch this one. So there's three tools you can use for this, in fact there's probably hundreds. Uh, I'm going to be demoing QuickTime. But Snip, Snip, or I love Jing. Jing Project, it's, I think it's free, it could be five bucks, it could be 20 bucks. Either way, it allows you to do the following. Watch. So I'm going, I'm on a Mac, remember everyone. So if you're on a PC, you would probably have to use Jing. If you're on a Mac, believe it or not, the QuickTime player actually has it installed. You go File, Screen Recording. Literally, it's this easy. You just highlight over the screen. You click Start Record. Hi, i am kind of got a lot going on here at the moment, as you can see my presentation here. I'm just using my mouse and I'm clicking on Canva now and as you can see here, if I want to change that number, I can change it to a 9. Hi, i am kind of got a lot going on here at the moment, as you can see my presentation here. I'm just using my mouse and I'm clicking on Canva now and as you can see here, if I want to change that number, I can change it to a 9. Okay, you, you, you get the technique. Now the technique allows you to record the screen and you save that to, to you as a video file. You could upload it to YouTube, that's what I tend to do. You could upload it to Vimeo or you could just put it on a USB drive and give it to participants. Really good when you're trying to show people how to do something, use a program and so forth. Screen recording, very powerful and really not that difficult. Camtasia would have to be my favourite program in terms of video work. It allows you to do all sorts of things. Get, get, have a look at it. It's kind of the extension of Jing Project. I'm using Camtasia to do flip classrooms. In fact, I use it to just video edit. But I'll use it to record the screen. I'll blend in a bit of music. I'll put some titles in there. And Camtasia also allows you to embed quizzes into the video. They're watching the video. It stops. They have to actually fill out a quiz and then it moves forward. Camtasia allows you to embed quizzes in video. <laughs> Collaboration, you've got to love that word. <coughs> Collaborate. Google Classroom, those that are using it, those that haven't used it, go on and you can register for free. It takes, you know, it took me about five minutes. Uh, if you're a school, you get it for free. If you're an educational institute, you get it for free. So it's not going to cost the organisation any money other than maybe time to learn the tool. So I thought I'll give you a quick demo on how it actually works to see it in, in play, to see if it's right for you. So what I'd like to do is a collaborative <coughs> document. Now we need to understand how the cloud works, how the 
internet works. So this cup is the cloud. All right, Kerry, I might have borrowed the plastic. Thank you. I almost wanted to be a barrel girl. There you go. <laughs> You're the cloud. Okay. And Paul. <laughs> Sorry, mate, you're the only one I know. Oh, I am. A couple of bit on the plane. Yeah, you're over there and I'm here. Okay, so uh, this is a, a Word document. A Word document. And uh, normally that would be saved where, Paul, if you were, weren't using the cloud, where would you save a Word document? On my laptop. Correct. USB on your laptop. So when you're saving it to the cloud, you're saving it up into Perry. Alright, so put yours in there. It allows the three of us to collaborate on that document. Now that's fairly simple stuff. If you haven't done that before, it allows you to collaborate. But Paul, what does uh, the cloud, the Google Apps environment, what does it allow you to do in terms of collaboration? Do you know that? Do you know in terms of where I'm heading with this? So you co-write a document. Mm -hmm. In real time. It allows you to co-write a document in real time. Thank you guys. That was Oh, so I can hold the knowledge then. You can hold the knowledge. So what I'll do is I'm going to co-write a document in real time. I like that good description. So I have created a document and I have placed it <coughs> up on the web and I have invited myself somewhere here I saw it before. Here it is. To edit it. This document is sitting in Kerry's cup sitting up in the cloud, it's not sitting on my computer, <coughs> and it allows you to edit in real time. Let's give that a go. So what I'll do is I'll edit this document on my smartphone. You need to install the Google app called, I think it's just called Google Docs. And what I'll do, watch what happens up in the right hand corner here. Just here. Watch what happens right here as I enter the room. I'm signing in now. Hopefully it'll pop up. Yeah. <coughs> I might show you my iPhone as well. So this particular technique that I'm about to do, I'm using Reflector. <coughs> Reflector allows me to share my phone. I'm going to do that right now. You just literally mirror it. It's kind of handy. So now you can see my iPhone up on the screen. So it operates in real time here. So sometimes when you want to be able to demo an app or demo something on your iPad, Reflector allows you to show it. So I'm going to go back into that document, Doc. Open up docs. For some reason I can't seem to find it, so I'm just going to do a quick. Oh, there it is. Q and A demo disappeared. Beautiful. So I should be able to type under question two now. Hello. It should appear here. So the laptop is another person and the iPhone is another person. You can have 10 people, 100 people editing the same document. You can have uh, also track changes, uh, and once it's finished, uh, you can have it approved, have an editor, and have contributors. There's a whole lot of privileges you can do within that environment. But once you're done with it, if you need to, you can just go File, uh, Download <coughs> as a Word doc. Download as a PDF. So it allows you to collaborate on a document, download it as a Word document, and, uh, and Google Apps allows you to do this. But those that are using 
Microsoft 365 in their schools. I was at Latrobe University, I was teaching up there this semester. They use Microsoft 365. Everything I'm showing you here can be done with Microsoft 365 as well. So you don't need Google Classroom to achieve this. You would just ask the person, or if you don't know how to do it, once you've got Google, uh, Microsoft 365 installed, then you can do that sort of technique. All right, so you're seeing my screen. Those that are on uh, their devices, you will see a question. Where are the devil's marbles located? You should have a picture of Australia up on your screen. And now you should be able to draw a little circle around where the devil's marbles are, if you happen to know where those are. So once you've done that, if you could just click Submit for me. So draw over the Australia, put a little circle or an arrow, or however you like to draw. Once you've drawn on it, then I'll get you to submit it. So this is quite cool too. You can actually have floor plans or tractor plans, or you could have a particular experiment. And we can see here where people think the devil's marbles are. So this is using Nearpod. This is one of the other interactive features it offers you. I'm not going to give the answer away just yet. But you get the idea. You can use this. Your brain might be going, oh, yeah. Okay. And so they can do this at home as well for homework. It doesn't have to be done live. Sorry, I should have explained that. So you could put a Nearpod presentation up and send them home, and they could be doing it at home for homework or part of their learning process as part of your course. And so if you've been to the Devil's Marbles, this person here has, Paul, been to the Devil's Marbles, we. Yeah, not too bad. This one a little bit off. But the Devil's Marbles are, yeah, this one here looks good, Claire. And that's where the Devil's Marbles are. So. Well done. Robotics. Robotics are coming. They're here. People use them. I'm going to just give you a couple of really cool ones. There's a lot more out there, but again, sometimes this can be information overload as I'm going through the topic. Uh, there's two cool ones on the market. I like uh, Ozobots, and I really like Makey Makey. These are simple kits that you can buy to teach probably primary school, more, more, more to the fact, but Makey Makey, certainly not. I, no, look, I'm gonna show you Makey Makey, and you can make it up yourself. You can, you can see if you think it can be applied to anyone. So let's check out the video. <coughs> Hi, I'm Jay. And I'm Eric. We're graduate students at MIT Media Lab. We have a dream that everyone is an inventor. So we created Makey Makey to let you invent just by alligator clipping. Alligator clips stuff like bananas to your Makey Makey. When you touch the banana, your computer just thinks you're touching the keyboard. The front has arrow keys, spacebar, and mouse left click.
When you're ready for more, flip the Makey Makey over and you've got more keyboard keys and support for the mouse. You can even use the board like an Arduino when you are ready. No programming, no breadboarding. You don't even have to install software. Just plug it in USB. Order your Makey Makey today and start changing how the world works. Boing, 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 We're moving along now into emerging. Emerging technologies. Thanks for the intro, YouTube. A couple of my favourites, those that have seen a lot of this before, don't spoil it for everybody else. Those that haven't seen it, uh, yeah, sit back and uh, sit back and enjoy. So we're going to talk firstly about augmented reality, then we'll move into virtual reality. So it's sometimes better to see rather than uh, rather than uh, me just telling you via PowerPoint. So let's uh, let's do that. I love it when it works. Let's go simple to start off with. Let's go simple and we'll move into something a little bit harder. Um, Lot and Mally Prospectus. Simple uh, printed brochure, I'm sorry, printed uh, sort of uh, prospectus that tells us about the area and where the investment's going in. You know, and I'm a busy person and I kind of often just sort of like. Right, looks great. How cool would it be if we could interact with it rather than read it? Let's uh, let's demonstrate. So we'll start off with down getting up the app. You can download this off the web if you want it. It's just called Lot and AR. I did this about two years ago. This one. So you hold your phone over it, and throughout the brochure, I've got this bring it to life. See the video with our app. Do that all the time when I hold it. Let's do it again, guys. I don't know if you can. Yeah, you can. Cool. So you can see how that has picked up that image. So what it's doing is it's looking for images throughout the brochure. And so when it finds it, it brings it up. So we'll just do that one. Seems to work a bit better. And I can just click play, and then it plays the video. Now that may not work because that's playing the video here. I'll just show you so you can see it. That is playing the video while it normally does. I think it's because I've got a mirroring, it won't work. You get the concept. Let's go deeper. This is a picture of a heart. This is in a I guess a book that you're teaching people about the heart and uh, students want to know more about it. This is a great app. It's called 4D, I think let me just bring it up so you can see it. That one. Anatomy 4D, it's free. So you download these off the net, they're just PDFs, just print them on your printer. Mobile data turned off, really? Okay, turn that on. I have a lot of apps running, so you could imagine my phone needs to keep up, so I turn a lot of it off as I'm presenting. And what you do is you use the camera's phone, uh, the, the camera on the phone, and what it's doing is it's trying to find the picture of the heart. Just going to reboot that. Okay, here we go. Come on. It works first go. Let's try something else. Might have been because I had the data turned off. This will do. So here, we can see the picture of the body actually on it. So it's coming off. 
and it's holding itself. Okay. Now I can interact with that. If I want to, I can make it larger. If I want to, I can also remove some of the body parts or some of the, you know, if I want to go in further, I can just keep tapping in. In fact, I can change it to a guy. I can go in. We want to remove the muscles maybe, have a look at the skeleton. You know, that looks pretty crazy. So if you were kind of teaching the human anatomy, we've got this idea that we can now, you know, augment augment things onto the print world. Pretty exciting. It's always nice to see something a bit fun though. I'm going to show you this one. This is a great kid pleaser if you've got some kids. It's called, it's actually just changed its name. I'll forget the name for you, another company brought them out. It's called Quiver. Quiver. I love this one. My kids love it too. So here is a colouring competition, colouring, someone's coloured that in, you can see there that's been coloured in. What Quiver does is it allows you to bring colouring to life. Just hold it over the picture. There you go. Let's turn up the volume. Two dollars, and you get about ten. Yeah. My kids get real bored now if the uh, things don't come to life. <laughs> so you got to start it. That's, that's, uh, you got to finish it. All right, augmented reality. So how do I use augmented reality? That was a bit of fun and dance, but the serious side is I use a program called Arasma. A U R A S M A. Arasma. So Erasma is a free augmented reality app that allows you to overlay video, uh, allows you to overlay JPEGs, 3D, all sorts of things. So I highly recommend you look up Erasma. Okay. Let's do some VR, virtual reality. What's the difference? AR, I can see you and you can see the bird. VR, I can't see you. I'm in a virtual reality. So there is a bit of a difference. It's worth, uh, worth exploring. So I would like to teach you how to do your own VR. Stay with me. See if you can keep with me. All right? Let's do it. The app that you need to get, whether you want to get it now or if you want to get it tomorrow or if you don't want to get it, that's cool. Um, if you have iOS, you will be downloading and installing Street View. If you have an Android, you'll be downloading and installing Google Camera. There is a big difference. So you need to go in and download the Google camera on Android or Street View on your iOS. So I've got it, of course, and I'll give you a quick demo of it now. Okay, booting up Street View. Here we go. So this little button here says, take a photo. All right, I'll do that. And all I do, it's not rocket science, I just hold it up to the dot. So anyone who can take half a photo should be able to just follow the dots. And so I could be outside in a field, I could be inside in a classroom, I could be in a motor mechanic, I could be out on a farm and you want to teach people oh and s and what you've got is a workshop that's perfectly set up. And then maybe you could take another one that's got about 10 different things that are wrong. And so you would have two pictures of the same location. So I'm just working my way around. Some of you may have already been downloading the app, that's cool. 
Now you want to make sure when you're doing this that you're watching down the bottom. <coughs> See down the bottom that says 6 o'clock. So you need to literally map out your entire area. It's a bit quick in that when you're outside. This takes a little bit, but this will be worth it. And I'm going to make sure that we get it because we can then use it afterwards. So I'm just going to keep going. Not much more to go. When you're standing really close to things, you can see that it doesn't do a good job. It's got, sometimes I find that if I'm in an open environment. All right, good. It's gone green. Click on the button. What happens now is that the little Google comes along and starts piecing it together for you. So it starts putting and says, all right, I know that little table. All right, there's a person. There's a sun. There's a tree. And what it does is actually stitches it. So it's currently stitching that together. Now, I travel a fair bit, and when I go to different locations, I like to take little 360s. In fact, there's the bus. Cool, might as well use that one. So what I've got here is a 360 of the bus. So I come over here, I can turn my phone, and you can see the bus. I'll wait until I get that finished. Now, if I click on this tiny little I guess it's like a compass. Suddenly it uses the gyroscope. So if you're in an outside environment and you want to educate people, or if you want to show them, you now can do that with Street View. It's always important to go one step further though, I think. So let's do that. Uh, this is known as Google Cardboard. If you haven't seen Google Cardboard, it's ten dollars, five dollars. You buy them off eBay, and they come in a little packet. It's normally like this. In fact, it's flat packed. So you can give these to participants. You can give them to teachers. You can give them to students. And all you do is you just fold it out. I oh, normally just keep mine together. And then if we go back to Street View. Actually, we click on the little Google Glass thing. I'll show you. It's just here. Google Cardboard, sorry. So when I click on that, watch what happens. It asks me to tilt my phone, and then it gives me two. And then when I whack my phone in here, you're in the front row. You bring an apple. You bring an apple. Or? <laughs> I'm in the front row, stand up Naomi. So if you come over here, put that up to your eyes, tell me what you can see. You can see how Naomi's looking around, she's able to look up and down, turn around, and she's now in a 3D virtual environment. So those little glasses actually make you feel like you're standing in the location. Get the idea? Yeah, thanks Naomi. Yeah, so that's pretty cool stuff, isn't it? You can do all that yourself with what I showed you. So you can get these on the eBay. I've got a couple. You know, I use them from time to time. But what I tend to do is use something like this. This was $20. Oh, and so this one here, it looks fancier than what it is. It's 20 bucks. All you do is you open that up. It's got suction caps. Put on the suction caps. Place it in here. Oh, upside down. <laughs> I find that if I don't take this off, it doesn't work. Put on the suction cap. Just put this on your head. And I'm literally, right now, looking at that environment. So if you needed to take people somewhere rather than take them out on the field, you could literally just bring the field to them or bring the example to them and they can learn about it. 
in the future where we're heading. Next year you'll see a lot of releases of this. We'll be wearing glasses that'll do the same thing and you'll be able to touch and interact with that. All right, so I'm definitely in, in that space, but that's enough for today to give you an indication of some ideas on how you might be able to use that in your education. Do you know they called Google Glasses? No, no, um, those ones there? Yeah. No, it's just a headset. Just a headset. You might want to do assessments. This is the last one. So I've given you Near, oh, Nearpod. Nearpod, that's what I'm using right now. And Camtasia also allows you to embed quizzes. So where do you learn more about this thing? Where do you learn more about what I showed you? Well, there's a few little things you could do if you wanted to learn more. This is a fantastic website, everyone. If you want to sort of be not flooded, you know, you can subscribe. Uh, each week they give you a bit of a digest on where EdTech's going or digital classroom. This is where I learned. So I, I follow uh, elearningfeeds.com. Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y.com. That's a really good resource. You can go on $5, $20, $100. There's lots of different courses in here. You can go in on any topic. How do I use Google Hangouts? Uh, uh, how do I use uh, augmented reality? How do I use uh, Google Docs? How do I, you know, it's mainly about the online world. In fact, no, you can learn how to bake a cake. I've gone in there and done that. Digital Classroom is an excellent hashtag. Those that follow hashtags on uh, Twitter or um, Facebook and EdTech, they're the two that I follow to try and keep up with this particular journey. I've created a video uh, of my experience in La, uh, La Trobe University this semester. I was up there as a marketing lecturer. Uh, I'd encourage you to watch that. I go through, it takes about seven minutes. I use all the tools and I show you what I did, but I also show you the reactions of the students. I think that's important. It's nice to show you all these fancy stuff, but did it actually work? Well, according to the feedback, it did. Um, so that is definitely available, and you can watch that on my YouTube channel. Okay, so it's uh, available. So to finish off, I'd like to have a quick poll. We'd like to see what you think was the best stuff that you learned today. So grab your devices. This will be good feedback for Kerry and myself to get a bit of a feeling of what people liked. Let's have a little look. Did you like Canva, that desktop publishing tool that I showed right at the start? Did you like the augmented reality, that little bird jumping off the, jumping off? Did you like doing those 360 virtual tours? Or what about uh, Google Docs, Google Hangouts, or anything else? So we'll see here what's working. So we've got a bit of a draw going here with the Google Docs and Canva. Uh, augmented reality has just taken over. Augmented reality is something that we do want to keep our eye on, everybody. And Canva, yeah, that's good. I would think though, though they'd be the top two. So Canva and augmented reality were the winners. Tim, if you've done like this poll, and you go, oh, I want to change my mind, is there a, are you able to do that and go back to the question and change your answer? Yes, you can, but then you'd have to republish it and all the answers prior to that would have to be resubmitted. You'd still get the old results from the previous question. Yeah. But if you need, there was a spelling mistake or a new thing you wanted to add, yeah. Like um, if it was a quiz and, you know, a, kid, a student had changed their mind. Oh, the student. Answer. I don't think so. It's not like an online course. I think it's a bit more simpler than that, this particular tool. Maybe you could try it. I think once you submitted it. Yeah. I just submitted mine here too. I went with the 360 tools. One minute, Kerry, that's it. So what have we covered? A lot. We've covered what is a digital classroom using digital tools. I've shown you a lot of digital tools and I also showed you the 360 virtual tours. I'm hoping that I've given you at least something to go back to the classroom or go back to your workplace. I want to hope that you're going to be using some of this digital stuff that I showed you today to enhance the learning.
So my next steps are quite simple. Continue to educate yourself. I really encourage you to collaborate. Don't do it on your own. Speak to maybe the principal or the owner or if you're the owner and get feedback from participants. Did that work? Really? You didn't think it was that good? Oh, why not? And so forth. So without further ado, that is it. Thanks for joining me on a little bit of a whirlwind uh, of a venture, but uh, yeah, hopefully some good stuff in there for you to take back to your workplace. Thank you.